everybody, welcome to Sports with Ricardo Lightborn tonight. This one goes out to the nurses at uh, Okeanos. Uh, they sent me a remember them tonight. You know, they kind of biggity like that, okay? The track and field season started uh, with the Stingers of Sunland and the St. George's Jaguars will be out there tomorrow. The GB3As are looking to complete the process of the total representation for athletes and coaches. Given the excitement of track and field it brings to Grand Bahama, Don Burton says that the new administration is looking forward to having a facelift as far as the sport. We have put in place an athletes association mainly for our senior, our senior team. Um, if you know, most of the sprinters, quarter milers are out of Grand Bahama. So we're trying to bring all our athletes together. We've also implemented a junior program association so we can bring the athletes together, head of concerns, and try to make track and field better than it, than it was in the past years. Well, the GB3 Ace is looking for the inclusion of all Northern Bahamas as far as representation. It's the most effective way to receive that attention the athletes and also the region needs, says Emmett Higgins. We are also interested in developing um, the GB3 as into a Northern Association. Um, we'll be going into Grand, um, to Bimini and Abaco to develop those programs. So moving forward, I think it's important that we, we all you know, partner with, with one another in the development of, 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 of those goals. Now, the GB3As have held the second annual awards and installation ceremony Sunday at the Bishop Michael Eldon Auditorium. You see, the newly elected board was encouraged to push forth in making the difference in track and field. Megan Shepard was there. Family, friends, and sports enthusiasts coming together Sunday to support the newly elected board of the Grand Bahama Amateur Athletic Association. President of the B3A's Rosemont carry on Island for the ceremony. She encouraged the new executives to always remember why they joined the association as it will be their driving force during the difficult times. Your collective why must be so compelling that when obstacle comes, your passion your drive, your commitment is what will sustain you and guide you and will prepare you forward. She noted that making changes will not always be easy, but necessary. Change can be hard and challenging. Your why must give you courage, boldness, and fortitude. Your why will make you resourceful, creative, and innovative. You must be passionate and resolute with your why. Minister for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darville, coming out to support the new board as they aim to make a difference in the lives of athletes on Grand Bahama. He also pledged his full support to the association. I committed 100% oh yeah, oh yeah. to the GB3A. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And when I say that, I'm not just saying to be there for you. I'm there to fight the battles with you. A lot of the financial constraints that we've experienced, I'm going to be there to ensure that we not only improve our athletes, but also intricately involved to improve the facilities that exist on Grand Bahama so that the athletes in Grand Bahama can have the best opportunity to be world class. The new board is headed by President Aram Lewis, Vice President Emmett Higgins, Secretary General is Dion Britton, Assistant Secretary Sandra Lang. The Treasurer is Anton Boleg, Assistant Treasurer Ravano Ferguson, and the Public Relations Officer Shakitha Henfield. Megan Shepard, ZNS, Total Sports. Well, the Grand Bahama Gymnastics Academy has showed up and showed out of the 2015 Atlanta's Crown Gymnastics Competition last month. Our Kimberly Mullings has an update on the gymnast performances. The Atlantis Crown has been dubbed the largest gymnastics competition in the West Indies, this time featuring nearly 900 competitors from the United States, Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, and Panama. Grand Bahama Gymnastics Academy coach Rico Thompson says the team performed to the best of their ability. Our girls did pretty well uh, when they went out. We took 41 girls with us and of course one boy. Um, but our girls uh, did exceptionally well, especially the level one team. We Coach Rico says their first timers also did well, considering the fact that Grand Bahama has a small gymnastics community. He added that the support from family and friends made all the difference. The coaches were just as nervous as they were, so that didn't really help. But it was uh, it was fun to see that the energy from the kids and uh, most of our first timers did better. 
uh, than we had uh, ever anticipated or expected. So we were very proud of them. It was nice to have uh, so many new kids go and so many first timers do so well. First time competitor of Grand Bomber Gymnastics Academy, O'Brien Parker, captured the overall boys title. Levels 2 and 3 both placed third and level 4 placed fourth. Now that the competition is over, the coach says the team has a lot more work to do. So the girls next month are headed to a competition in the U.S. Um, they're pretty much going to be competing uh, the same levels that they've competed at Atlantis Crown. Like I said, the season has just started, so they have to continue on doing what they're doing now. But by December, they should be changing up, going for new levels, new skills. Much more frustrating, much more fun, um, much more exciting. The Grand Bomb Gymnastics Academy team brought home more than 120 medals from the 2015 Atlantis Crown. Kimberly Mullings, Zedna Soul Sports. When they go away, we're trying to get a gymnastics team up here for our girls. If I can only get them to walk the stairs, we'll be just fine. But that's a look at your sports tonight.